Christ in all the Bible. A general reference to Christ. Of whom did Christ say the scriptures testify? Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are which testify of me. John 5.39 Note, search the old scriptures, for they are they that testify of Christ, to find him in them is the true lament in of their study to be able to in, interpret them as he interpret them is the best result of all biblical learning. <sighs> now let's see. <laughs> Of whom did Moses and the prophet write? Philip thought of Nathanael and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph, John 1, four, uh, one forty-five. Note, in her translation of the Old Testament scripture, Helen Spurgeon, expressed the following wish for all who should read her translation. May very many exclaim, as the translator has often done when studying numerous passages in the original, I have found the Messiah. For those words did Christ say the disciples ought to have learned of his death and resurrection. O oh, fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophet has spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Luke 24, 25, and 26. How did Christ make it clear to them that these scriptures testify of him? And the be and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Verse 27. Christ the seed. Where do we find the first promise of the Redeemer? And the Lord God said unto the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thee and thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Genesis 3, 14 and 15. In what words was this promise rewarded to Abraham? In thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. Genesis 22, 18. See also Genesis 26, 4, 28, and 14. Oh, let's go see if we can't check that out. All right, 26 and 4. And I will make thy seed to multiply the stars of heaven, and I will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all nations of the world of the earth be blessed. All right, 28 and 14. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the, the south. And in thee and thy seed shall all families of the earth be blessed. Um, huh? I'm blessed. I know that for sure. I can feel it. All right, let's see what we got here. To whom did this promised seed refer? Now to Abraham and his seed were the promise made. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Galatians 3.16 
the angel and the rock. Whom did God promise to send with Israel to guide them into the promised land? Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into a place which I have prepared. Exodus 23, 20. Who was the rock that went with them <coughs> and did all drink the same spiritual drink? But they drank of that spiritual rock that flowed literally with them, them, that rock was Christ, 1 Corinthians 10 and 4. Birth, life, suffering, death, and resurrection. There was a Savior to be born, but thou, Bethlehem Ephraim, that Though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel. Those going forth have been from old, from everlasting. Micah 5 and 2 In what prophecy of Christ's life, suffering, death, Tra tragically foretold in the 53rd chapter of Isaiah. Well, let's go check it out. Isaiah 53. Who hath believed or report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He had no form or comeliness, and when he shall see him, there's no beauty that we should desire him. Now, you know them pictures that everybody's, well, let, let me get this one out, this one right here. That is not Jesus. That is not Jesus at all. This character that they, they make pictures of is uh oh, let me think of his name he's the one that uh did painted the chapel and all it's his boyfriend yeah mm -hmm. y'all can believe me or not it's up to you he is despised and rejected of men a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief and we hid as it was our face from him was he, so he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our grief and carried our sorrow, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray, and have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, 
and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the trouble of his soul, and shall be satisfied by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquity. Therefore will I drive him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Okay. I think that right there was a good one. Kind of like really summed up. Really. Um, all that God had went through on the cross. And his whole life. Okay. Where is the price of Christ's betrayal foretold? So they weighed for by price 30 pieces of silver, Zechariah 12, I mean 11 and 12, Matthew 26, 15. Um, yeah, we're going to have a lot of them in this one. Let's go check it out. Get that Bible out of here. So we're in Matthew now, 26, 15. <clears throat> Ooh, I'm going to go to Acts. Matthew. Mark. Okay, Matthew. 26. Um, 26 and 15. And said unto them, What will ye give me? And I will, will deliver him unto you. And they can... Uh, conversated with him for 30 pieces of silver. Okay. I think there was another one in here. Um, no. Where in the Psalms are Christ's dying words recorded? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Psalms 22, 1. See, Matthew 27. Oh, God, go one more over. Let's see. It says 26. Oh, come on now. I don't want to go to Luke. 27.46. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, Lama. Sabachathia, that is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And to thy hand I commit my spirit. Psalms 31 and 5. See Luke 23 and 46. Let's go back to Luke. Luke. Uh, 23. Oh, come on. I know you used to when you used to turn the pages. And uh, they wasn't that hard to turn. But now it seems like they are hard to turn. 23, 46. More page. 46. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice... He said, Father, into thy hand I commit my spirit. And having thus said thus, he gave up the ghost. Alrighty. How is Christ's resurrection foretold in the psalm? For thou shalt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Psalm 16 and 10. Alright, and it's a C Acts. Uh, two. Let's go to Acts two. I like it that it gives you more than just the one. Huh? Acts two twenty five. Acts two twenty five. 
for David speaketh not concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. See. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer the unholy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the way of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. And men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the parchment David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sculpture is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loin, according to the flesh, he would rise up Christ to set on his throne. He, seeing this before, spoke of the resurrection of Christ, and his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did seek corruption. He had to be perfect. Christ's second coming and the kingdom. Um, in what words does Daniel foretell Christ receiving his kingdom? And I saw in a night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and kingdom, that all people, nations, language, should serve him. He dominion, dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. Daniel seven, thirteen and 14. See also Luke 32, 33, 19, 11, 12, Revelations 11 and 15. All right, I'm not going to go to those. I'm going to go ahead. How is Christ's second coming described in Psalms? Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills be joyful together before the Lord. For he cometh to judge the earth with righteousness. Shall he judge the world and the people with iniquity? Psalms 98, 8, 9. Our God shall come and shall not keep silent. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very temperous around about him. He shall call to the heavens of, from above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Psalms 50, 3 and 4. <coughs> The face in the puzzled picture. Did you ever see one of these picture, let's see, puzzle pictures on which you were told to discover the face of the man or some object? You turn it this way and that, and finally, there you suddenly see it, just as plain as day, and wonders. Why you had not seen it before. The great face in the Bible is that of Jesus. He is the supreme object of the scriptures. Search the scriptures. They testify of me. John 5.39 Like the scarlet thread that runs through every inch of rope in the British Navy. Like the melody of a beautiful song like the theme of a great masterpiece. So is Jesus in the scripture. He is the author and the hero, the beginning and the end of your Bible. All right, now it gives you a, the picture that I'll show the, of this character here. Search the scripture for in them. You think you have eternal life, and they which testify of me. John 5 and 39. 
Alrighty, I hope you enjoyed this one. And I'm going to see to it we can do, keep on doing it, I hope.